Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be discussing Ineos and their silence on Eric Ten Hag. Um, where do we even start? Like honestly, I mean, after the Aston Villa game, right? Every Manchester United fan, well at least I'd like to think, majority of the Manchester United fan base, even the guys who were the biggest Ten Hag inners, they were all saying that, you know what? Ten Hag doesn't look like the guy anymore. He, he genuinely, he looks like he's out of ideas. Um, he bought plays that want to use them. Um, he's not winning. A style of play is absolutely awful. And to make it worse, we're basically 14th in the Premier League. So even the most staunch Ten Hag in or his biggest fan or defendant or whatever you want to call them, they were all saying, you know what? It's time to go, bruv. Like, honestly, it's time for Ten Hag to go. Now, what Ineos have done is, um, I believe we played Aston Villa, was it on a Sunday, I think? I think it was on a Sunday. Now, what we all expected was the following day, Monday, if not Tuesday, he'd get the sack. In fact, there was there was a report uh, before the game that Ineos were going to have a, a meeting regarding the manager. Um, I think the meet, meeting was supposed to be had on, uh, the game was played on Sunday, and the meeting was supposed to be had on the following Tuesday. Um, so... Basically, the media tried to put two and two together and came to the conclusion that, you know what, they were going to sack Ten Hag on Tuesday. Um, immediately after the, 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 the meeting between Ineos, uh, they're going to come out and announce that uh, Ten Hag's been sacked. Now, as someone who's been waiting for Ten Hag to be sacked, because I remember I've been telling you guys that Ten Hag's not good enough for quite some time. Um, I was excited by the news. I'm thinking, finally, we're going to get rid of this manager and actually get someone who's going to play good football. Maybe we can actually have a good season. You know, now lo and behold, um, Ineos had the meeting on Tuesday. This was last week, by the way. Um, the international break had just started, so Ineos had the meeting. Um, and apparently, after the meeting, um, some of, some of the, the the senior members, of, uh, which are within Ineos, were asked, um, "What was the meeting about? Is Tenag getting sacked?" And apparently, Ineos said that, "Look, we don't have to tell you anything. Uh, we were just having a normal meeting between management. Um, we, it happens every now and then. Uh, the meeting was booked in months prior, so." Yeah, they don't have to tell us anything about it. Uh, it it's basically internal stuff, so they're not going to discuss anything with the media. Now, cool enough, I'm thinking, you know, maybe they're going to they, they plan on releasing a statement in, in a day or two, or maybe even three. But basically, I expected towards by the end of this past week, maybe around Friday, Saturday, we would, we would have the news that Eric Tenag had been set and Ruth Van Stowe is going to take over on an interim basis, or they bring in an, uh, a different manager on a permanent basis, whatever. But what I expected to happen was Ineos would sack Eric Ten Hag. Um, and it unfortunately has not ended up going that way uh, because Ineos have been very, very silent on Eric Ten Hag. And it looks like they're backing him. It looks like they're going to keep him. Um, now, I, I don't even think they're backing him. Um, there were a few reports that came out that the reason why Manchester United don't, have, don't want to uh, sack um, Eric Ten Hag was because if they were to sack Eric Ten Hag, we would apparently have to pay him something around... 17 million i don't know if it's pounds or euros but apparently if we were to set 10 i would have to pay him something around around 17 million pounds so it's looking like Ineos are either keeping him just because they don't want to spend money or they don't want to give him a payout or the second reason which i could think of that Ineos don't want to set 10 now is they're trying to save face because what happened was in the summer they planned on sacking him but they didn't for whatever reason whether it's because whoever they interviewed uh turned the job down or they couldn't reach an agreement or whether it was because they wanted to go according to fan opinion because fans were basically back in tenag after the fa cup win even though we had a rubbish season they were back in tenag they even went as far as writing a petition or a letter to Ineos to say you need to keep tenag is the man uh, for the job so Ineos then went and gave Ten Hag an, extra, an extension. They, they extended the, the, they basically activated the clause of an extra year on his contract, which means that Ten Hag, instead of having one year guarantee plus one optional year uh, left in his contract, he now has a definitely guaranteed two years in his contract. And now what I think is, 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 is happening right now, what we're seeing happen is, I think Ineos have, have seen, you know what, this guy's not the guy. We don't want him. Um, however, if we sack him 10 games into the season after we chose to back him and give him an, uh, an extension basically to make to, to turn his contract from one year to two years we look stupid so that's how literally that's how i see it i don't know i don't know what you guys think but that's how i see it i think they they're they avoiding looking like they're incompetent or they don't know what they're doing 
But my pushback to that would be you guys not sacking him, given the start he's had to the season so far, is what makes you look incompetent. Like that genuinely, genuinely makes Ineos look very incompetent because not only has he broken many, many, many negative records, right? But guess what? Last year, Eric Tenag broke the record for Manchester United for uh, Manchester United's worst start to the season after the first seven games, seven Premier League games, right? We had the worst start under Tenag last season. This year, he's even done worse than last season. He's like, like literally, he's had an even worse start to the season than we did last season. So, if that's not reason enough, I don't know what is. Like, we're literally 14th. We've got a negative goal difference. Our style of play is shit. The players don't look like they know what they're doing. He's dropping the players he spent big money on. He's dropping De Ligt, he's dropping uh, Martinez, he's dropping Casemiro, Mount, whoever you want to mention. He's dropping them. Talk less of Anthony, he doesn't even use him. Even though he, he pushed, he went all out for him. We spent 88 million pounds. He doesn't want to use him. Honestly, I think there's more than enough reasons to sack this man at this point. He's not good enough. He's never going to be good enough. And... I genuinely believe we were gonna get he was gonna get sacked this 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 um past international break, but it seems like Ineos have bottled it. Honestly, if you're asking me, it's they, they they've bottled it. They have because now it was wrong of them to give him an extension or rather to 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 uh, activate the clause of uh, the extra year in his contract to begin with, and now they've, they've that they've done that they've kind of basically put a rope around their own necks, and now they like. Shit, if we sack him now, we look bad. But what they don't, but they don't, what they, what they don't really realize is them keeping him is not good either. It's bad for all the reasons I've mentioned. 14th, negative goal difference, rubbish football. It's just not working, guys. It's time to cut our losses. Now, there's, there, there, there's, there's reports that um, Sir Jim is not a fan of Eric Ten Hag. Um, apparently, he doesn't rate him at all. If anything, Sir Jim apparently really, really likes Thomas Tuchel. And you'd like to bring him to the club. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest Thomas Tuchel fan. However, I'm not going to disrespect him and say he's a rubbish manager. He's won the Champions League with Chelsea. He's won the Super Cup, Club World Cup, all of that stuff, right? He's won titles in France, Germany. Cool. But I don't want him at United. I'm not saying my decision or, or who United hire is up to me. It's not. But I'm just saying I wouldn't prefer someone like him. I'd prefer someone like uh, Julian Nagelsmann or someone like Ruben Amorim or even Xavi from Barcelona, you know, those are the type of managers I'd be looking to bring into the club. However, um, it's up to Ineos to, to, to make that decision, honestly. It's up to them. They, they can't, they can't wait, because from the feeling that I'm getting now is, like I said, they don't want to sack him because they're going to look stupid. Um, the other reason is, we've got an international break, believe it or not, in three weeks' time, in November, which is so stupid, because what the hell are all these international breaks for? That's why players end up getting injured and missing the rest of the season, because of all these games that they're playing, which are so unnecessary. But anyways, we've got another international break in November, right? And I believe Ineos might be thinking, let's give him another three weeks, see how it does. And as far as I know, we've got uh, not the worst run of fixtures. And the last two games before the international break, if I'm not mistaken, we've apparently got Leicester at home and PAOK at home. Those are the last two games before the November international break. So what I think is going to happen here is Ineos are going to bottle it yet again. They're definitely going to bottle it. What's going to happen is they're going to... We're probably going to be having that run of oh, we win, we, we lose, we draw, we win, we lose, we draw. But when it comes to the, those last two games before the international break, we're going to beat Leicester City at home in the Premier League and we're going to beat Pierre Roque at home in the Europa League. And they're going to say, oh, you know what, even though the past couple of games have been rubbish and we, we've been losing or drawing or dropping points and not playing well, he's won the last two games against Leicester and Pierre Roque. So maybe let's give him a chance. Let's give him until December. Which is the wrong uh, uh, decision to make. This man is not good enough. I know there's some idiots out there who say, oh, why would you want to set 10 up now? Give him, give him the whole of the third year. In fact, if anything, we're only six points off top four. Like, guys, like, what are we doing here? This manager has shown us time and time again that he's not good enough and he's never going to be good enough. Ineos need to set this manager. The season can still be salvaged. Trust me, it's not gone yet. I mean, Ineos, literally, they're talking about building a new stadium, a 100,000-seater. You need revenue for that. You need money. You can't just build the stadium out of nowhere. You need money. How are you going to fill the 100,000-seater 100, when you're playing absolute rubbish? 
Okay, cool. Let's say the fans are still loyal to the club. They keep going, even though we're rubbish. They keep going to old, the new to Old Trafford or whatever it's going to be called. They fill in the 100,000 seater. Ten Hag's not going to get top four. So guess what that means? We're missing out on Champions League money. Uh, we're missing out on, 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 on Adidas money because I believe there's a, some sort of penalty fee uh, or percentage which Adidas doesn't pay us if we don't qualify for the Champions League. So, again, keeping this money is not good for us. We're going to lose lots of money. How are we going to get money to, to raise, uh, how are we going to raise funds to, to actually build a new stadium? When this manager is just dropping stinker after stinker after stinker. It's honestly time to go and Ineos need to make the decision. They were the ones coming out saying that, oh no, we're not afraid to make big decisions. Well, if, if a big decision is to be taken, we'll take it. The time is now, Ineos. The time is now. You have to act. This manager is not good enough. Get rid. I mean, we're at a point where some of these Tenag inners who, who are clearly still defending this man, even though he's clearly clueless and doesn't know what he's doing, some of the excuses are now that, oh no, second, the manager's not going to change anything. If anything, you're keeping all these rubbish players. He signed most of the players. And we're, we, we're now trying to turn a new leaf, right? We're saying the players we sign now are not signed to suit a manager, particularly. We're start, s signing players who, who will suit the style of play that Manchester United wants to execute week in, week out. So if we're saying we're signing uh, technical footballers, we're not signing them to suit ten out, or, or Ruud van Nistel or, or Nagos or, or Tuko or whoever we hire. We're signing them to suit Man United and the style of play we have. So whether or not we've got Tuko or Nagelsmann or Tenag or Rude or McKenna or whoever will get the job eventually, United want to play the same way. We want to play a particular set style of play. So, like I said, sacking a manager shouldn't be an issue because all we need to do is sack uh, Eric Tenag, keep the players we've, we've bought because that's clearly how we feel. Uh, we want to go in, uh, moving forward, right? So keep those players, get a manager who's going to play attractive football using those players. Then he can see if there's a few, few players who can't uh, um, adapt to his way of playing football, sell the players, get rid of them, and get players who actually suit the style of play of the club. There's honestly no need for us to be holding on to Eric Tanag simply because he won us the flipping Carabao Cup and, and, and FA Cup. Like, let's be serious here. This is Manchester United. Not flipping Ajax. No disrespect to Ajax, but it's not Ajax. It's a different level. And then you have these stupid fans who are like, oh no, but we don't want to become a second club. We don't want to sack managers. It doesn't work. United doesn't do that. We keep managers. Look at Sir Alex Ferguson. He was here for 26 years. That was flipping years ago. It doesn't happen anymore. Apart from Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, and who? Those are the only two managers who've been at, 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 at the, the Premier League class for the longest in, in recent years. There's a reason for that. Managers don't come to clubs and stay uh, seven, eight, nine, ten years anymore. It's rare. Like I said, it's only Klopp and Pep I can think of who've done it recently. Ateta has been at Arsenal for a while, although he hasn't uh, delivered a title. He's been there for a while. I think it's about four and a half, if not five years now. So again, we hear it. But you only get to keep a manager for that long. If they're performing, if they're rubbish, you have to sack them. So this nonsense of, oh no, we don't want to become a second club, needs to get out the door. You only get to stay at the club if you're performing. That's how it works, guys. In any form of life, at work, if you're not performing, you get sacked. As harsh as that might sound, that's the reality of things. You either deliver your job or you get sacked and someone else who can do the job gets hired in your place. It's as simple as that. Look at Chelsea. People will tell her about, uh, no, they spent a billion, they haven't won anything. Look at, under, uh, them, look at Chelsea and Abramovich. They were the most ruthless club in the Premier League. They would sack manager after manager after manager. And guess what? In the 20 years that Roman Abramovich was at Chelsea, Chelsea were one of the most successful teams in England. He delivered them about, what, two Champions League titles? How many Premier Leagues did he deliver? Is it about five, six, seven? FA Cups, Carabao Cups, they won, they won the lot. So this nonsense of... Oh no, we shouldn't be second. Look at Madrid. They sack managers for fun. The only reason Carlo Ancelotti has not been sacked right now at Real Madrid is because he's delivering the Champions League or, the, or, or La Liga. That's what big clubs do. You don't perform, you get sacked. You perform, you get to keep your job. And it's not a lifetime contract. It's not. So this notion of, oh no, Man United need to keep managers and try and give him another five, six, seven years. Guys, we've given Tenag 
He's, this is his third year and there is, there is literally no improvement whatsoever. This manager is tactically inept. His substitutions are rubbish. His starting 11s are rubbish. He seems confused. He just the, the job is just too big for him, unfortunately. Like, honestly, the job is too big for him and Ineos need to sack him. Now, we've accepted they're not going to sack him, right? Because, um, I mean, what? We're in the second week of the international break. The Premier League football resolves, uh, 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 resumes on, on, on Saturday. We're playing, um, is it Brentford at home? Or away, I'm not even sure, but we, we're playing Brentford this coming weekend. So it doesn't look like he's going to be sacked. He's definitely going to stay. And my prediction now is, because I predicted earlier on that they'd be sacked by Christmas. It looks like they're going to give him until the end of the year. The way I'm seeing it, because like I said, that November uh, um, international break, the last two games we've got, I believe, are Leicester City at home and POLK at home, who I think will, will, will beat both teams and they'll keep him for that. So to me, honestly, that goes against everything we believe in. As Manchester United, we're a big football club. We might not be the best club in, in the world anymore, we're far from it, but we're definitely one of the biggest clubs in the world. We're definitely top three. I genuinely believe when it comes to how big a club is, you've got Real Madrid, Barcelona, you've got Man United. As to which order, that's up to you. But those three are the three biggest clubs in the world, if you ask me personally. So we need to act like a big club, sack this manager and get someone else. I know they're not going to do it, uh, but honestly, we're just delaying the inevitable. This manager will be sacked, trust me. He will not finish the season. He will be sacked because he's not good enough. In the long run, he's definitely not good enough to be Manchester United manager. So he will be sick. So keeping him is literally just delaying the inevitable. Yeah. So this lack of decisiveness from Ineos, I won't lie. It's, it's got me side-eyeing them a bit. I'm looking at them a bit suspiciously like, mm, I don't know if I can trust you fully. You had a decent window, a transfer window. But when it came to second ten out the first time around during the summer, you bottled it. The second time around now during this international break you bottled it yet again so like i said i'm kind of side eyeing in at the moment but let's see what happens um i don't know i just i don't think Tenak's gonna turn things around so like i said he, we're just delaying the inevitable but i guess we'll see what happens um another thing which actually irritated me is the fact that today we're reading that apparently sir alex ferguson's um i don't know what to call it executive membership has been revoked and now apparently He's still allowed to go watch games. I don't know if it means he has to pay for his own tickets or whatever, but basically they're trying to save money by cutting whatever privileges Alex Ferguson had at the club. I mean, how dare you, Ineos? How dare you? The greatest manager in this football club's history, if not in, fo in, in footballing history. Sir Alex Ferguson, 13 Premier League titles, and you have the goal to tell him you're revoking his past or whatever privileges he had if, if he attended the game freely now you want to charge him for it whatever i don't know exactly what it means but i know they're revoking some of his privileges whilst keeping that fraud in a job who has his 14th in the league ineos ineos like i said kind of side eyeing them right now but anyways those are my thoughts on man united or, or rather on ineos being silent on the whole tenor thing and yeah, man, let me just let me know what you guys thought. Um, do you agree with Ineos being uh, keeping Tenag? I know rival fans are gonna love it, so rival fans, there's no point in you guys commenting because I know you guys want us to keep him because it's rubbish. But any United fans out there and or just football fans in general, let me know what you think. Do you do you think Ineos are bottling it? Do you think we should be questioning them a bit more for keeping Tenag? What do you think about them? What are they doing to Sir Alex Ferguson? What do you think? Just let me know in the comment section, but yeah. Anyways, if you haven't already, please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon. Peace.